consistent. Papa and it Limo, means some I love games you. are less representative of the franchise I miss you. than others. Time. I'll be real. I do not consider playing an MMO playing a Final Fantasy game. I think regardless of where you started, at this point in time, things that are built to waste your time are unacceptable. And uh, last video before we hop into Final Fantasy. Which Final Fantasy game should you play first? Final Fantasy Starter Guide. I think I saw Bahamut in there. Bahamut. When it comes to video game franchises, there are few that are as expansive and wide-reaching as Final Fantasy. Taking into consideration the main numbered titles, their sequels and spin-offs, I really want to play ten. spin-offs and their sequels, spin-offs of the spin-offs, remasters, international versions and remakes, there are literally hundreds of different games that exist and are tied to the name Final Fantasy. And when you add on yep. other entertainment properties such as the movies and anime series, that list becomes even longer. Earlier this year, as a nod to how expansive the brand has become, Final Fantasy was even granted a Guinness World Record as the franchise that houses the most standalone RPG releases. Damn. There is already ingrained in the franchise how these properties all connect to each other, for the most part, makes a lot of sense. And there's a degree of tolerance for how everything has built out over the past three decades. But for those on the outside looking in, it's no doubt very confusing. And it always raises the question of, if someone's interest in Final Fantasy has been piqued, where should they begin? As almost every iteration tells a unique story, mm -hmm. with a whole new world and an original cast of characters, you could argue that it doesn't really matter. But many also feature very different gameplay mechanics, such as jobs or a more modern preference for action-based combat, and they may also not even be RPGs. Even if they are related though, in a direct capacity through one of these things, such as a shared lore, there's also no guarantee that other aspects will remain consistent, Papa and it means Limo, some I games you. are less representative of the franchise than others. It makes the question of which Final Fantasy should you play first feel quite loaded, as really, there's no right or wrong answer. But there are many people who ask this question on a regular basis because figuring out the best point of entry is just so daunting. Yeah. There are also plenty of people who watch our videos and enjoy learning. Which is crazy. Like, I've never played 8 or even seen anyone play 8. But I know who Squall is because of how cool his gun is. Like, his weapon is so iconic that it breaches, like, all the boundaries. ...about the franchise, but have yet to play a Final Fantasy game for themselves. It's no doubt why this topic was actually voted on by our Patreon supporters. Every month, we suggest four to five different topics, and we make a commitment to make a video on the winning suggestion. This topic won last month's vote, but if you'd like to help steer future content, then please visit patreon.com forward slash ffunion for more information. Now, the first thing worth noting is that this question isn't the same as what's the best game in the franchise. That True. is also a very subjective notion yeah. as everyone is looking for different things when they right. play a game. One of the great things about Final Fantasy though is that thanks to the incredible variety of games available, so many individual preferences can be catered for and many aspects of particular games will just speak to people in different ways. And it's why, as the franchise is built out, smaller communities have formed due to their love for specific installments. For the same reason people, people like playing uh, tall tell games for their point-and-click adventure, explorative story narratives, I've always played Final Fantasy games for their Final Fantasy turn-based combat. For me, those are synonymous. So, like, playing a game like um, Final Fantasy XIV MMO was a very big step for me in getting out of my mindset that Final Fantasy fourteen or Final Fantasy is a series that is about turn-based strategy. And I love turn-based strategy. I think that turn-based strategy is an exceptional, awesome game type. 
That's why I play Pokemon, right? I love that that feeling of leveling up your party, getting them better, and then like strategizing on how to beat the other opponent. I love that so much. So I think that's the biggest point too, is like it's not necessarily which game is the best, but which game is the best for you. So if you don't like action combat, you probably don't want to play later installments. Same thing with if you don't like turn based strategy games. So like I won't start I will not start with ten. I will play ten eventually. Or not ten, sorry, fifteen. I will not start with fifteen, but I will play ten I'll play fifteen eventually. But if we're talking about the best place to start, there are numerous considerations and numerous options available. First, there's customization. With Final Fantasy having its roots in Dungeons and Dragons, Ultima, and Wizardry, customization was a prominent feature in the original experience, and as the franchise built out from its humble beginnings, the nature of this customization became a bit more extreme before then becoming much more subtle. The second consideration is story. Due to when they were released, earlier Final Fantasy games had less of a focus on story. But even as this particular aspect of the franchise developed, due to there being many different creative influences providing input, there's a lot of variety when it comes to narrative styles and depending on the style you enjoy, you will probably like some games more than others. The third consideration is then tolerance. If you're coming into the franchise blind, the era of gaming that piqued your interest will also play a part. Those who are more modern adopters True. may be a bit less tolerant of frustrating so game design saying. choices yep. and what by today's standards may be considered bland presentation that perhaps hasn't aged all that well. I think regardless of where you started, at this point in time, things that are built to waste your time are unacceptable. Um, it doesn't matter if it was good at the time or if you grew up on things like that. Things that waste your time and are not not really good, not, not good enough to like confuse you or to like get you like sucked in things like that. Like they have to like, they have to live past their due date. If that makes sense. Like a lot of them are like stay back in time and are stuck back in whenever they were first like made. So if you played a game back then, it was really cool then, and it, you, you were there then, so it wasn't that big a deal. But like a lot of those problems are glaring now. Like I can still play Star Fox sixty four, for example, and I don't really see many problems at all. The game is a smooth game, fun game mechanics, story is funny. Um, there's really cool moments, things like that are awesome. But in like Final Fantasy, there's I, in a lot of games where there's a lot of grinding, like in J JRPGs. Um, there's a lot of glaring time wasting things that are just there to waste your time. And I completely agree with this guy. Depending on where your preferences lie, each of these considerations will have a bearing on where it might be best to start. So we're going to run through each pillar in isolation before then providing a more holistic recommendation at the end. Now in the earlier days of the franchise, a lot of customization was afforded to the player, but one of the more unique systems was the job system. Final Fantasy 1, 3, and 5 featured this mechanic in various guises, but out of right. those three, Final Fantasy 5 offered the mm -hmm. most comprehensive experience. It featured the job change system that was introduced in Final Fantasy 3, and as you progressed through the game, 22 different jobs would become available, 22, a similar number Jesus. to its job change predecessor. But where it differed was the application of those jobs, as their roles were much more defined and expansive. Instead of changing the base function and providing one unique command, jobs in Final Fantasy V had their own progression. Learned traits could also be blended together to allow characters to fulfill hybrid roles. Final Fantasy V also introduced many more cool, unique though. jobs, such as Beastmaster, Blue Mage, and Mime. The question I have though is do you have to grind out all of these alt classes, man? If it's like that, it's gonna suck. That's the only problem. That's the only thing I worry about is having to grind out every class that I want to play. This made it a compelling experience, but in its original form, it wasn't released outside of Japan and its popularity only began to steadily increase following re-releases on the original PlayStation and the Game Boy Advance. It's also now available on PC and mobile devices, but due to the rather questionable art style, if you can play on the Game Boy Advance, that would be the recommended version. 
Many elements introduced in Final Fantasy V were then carried forward as the franchise built out, but not in the offline main numbered series. Jobs instead became a central focus in Final Fantasy Tactics and its numerous successors, Tactics and the two MMOs, Final Fantasy XI and XIV. Final Fantasy Tactics is a beloved spin-off that was created by Yasumi Matsuno and Hiroyuki Ito with minimal guidance from Hironobu Sakaguchi. It featured many traditional jobs and a whole host of original ones, but as it was an isometric turn-based strategy role-playing game, its gameplay style Reminds was me very of different from the traditional Final Fantasy experience at that time the art style. and was also a much less forgiving one. Its narrative style differed too, as while Sakaguchi and Yoshino Kitase were quite aligned in their delivery, Matsuno had very different views on how a story should be developed and executed, and many people enjoy the deeper interpersonal relationships that exist within the story of tactics, as well as its more political and ruthless nature. Even though it was re-released as Final Fantasy Tactics War of the Lions on the PlayStation Portable, with Matsuno returning to supervise its development, we would recommend though checking out the original PlayStation version if you can. Unlike the PSP version, it's very stable and runs at a solid 60 frames per second, no matter how crazy the battle sequences get. Final Fantasy XI and XIV also feature very extensive job systems, and like Final Fantasy I and III, you play as a nameless warrior of light, albeit with much more character <laughs> customization options. Each experience uh, offers a lot of room for individual playstyles, but as Final Fantasy XIV has developed following its initial misstep, it has become much more fleshed out. At this point Blue in Mage. time, it stands as the most comprehensive game in the franchise when it comes to customization, while still staying true to what it means to be Final Fantasy. True. The only downside is that to make the most of this, you need to pay a monthly subscription fee yep. and have a lot of free time. Yep. Many other games though have also featured customization. Final Fantasy 7, 8, Very 10, right. the original version of 12 and 13 house systems whereby any character can realistically fulfill any role. This was possible thanks to numerous unique systems that were employed, such as Materia, Junctioning, the Sphere Grid, or License Boards, but because of this, none featured any real association with jobs. When looking at the story, even though Final Fantasy 1 through 3 did feature a semblance of narrative, it wasn't until the arrival of Final Fantasy 4 that the narratives started to become much more developed. This game featured a much more expansive cast of characters than compared oh, to previous games, and, four? and each member had a set role to play in the story. There was also a clear main protagonist for the first time, called Cecil Harvey. If you have a preference for narrative, then this is a good place to start, and if you can, you should hunt down Final Fantasy IV Complete Collection on the PlayStation Portable, as this features a spruced up 2D art style that's much nicer to look at. The 3DS remake is solid too though, and it features a retranslated script, with many new concepts incorporated to help expand the game's lore. Above all else, starting at this point in the franchise will help you gain a better appreciation of the numerous allusions and easter eggs that appear in later games, and as many of the notions explored within Final Fantasy IV were taken much further in the decade that followed, this game will also help you to better understand many of the narrative concepts that you will experience in other iterations in the franchise. Final Fantasy VI, for example, was the first major step forward in this regard. Yoshinori Kitase worked with Hironobu Sakaguchi to provide the base concept, and they worked with a dedicated team of event planners for the first time to craft a story that was much grander in scale. This approach was then adopted and expanded upon with the releases of Final Fantasy VII, VIII. Yeah, these blocky textures in, uh, in seven, man, are like one of the reasons why I really don't want to approach it. I mean, I know the story is good. Um, I know the story though, mostly. So I mean, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be like exploring new territory, because I've already experienced Final Fantasy VII through other people. So it wouldn't really be like playing a new game. I've already I've already seen it. So was then adopted and expanded upon with the releases of Final Fantasy VII, VIII, IX, and X. Each of these games featured fleshed out stories with expansive casts of characters, and although the base themes varied. Due to them coming from the same creative visionaries, the stories of 4 through 10 are pretty well aligned with each other, and you could do worse than starting with any of these games. But with neither creator being involved with any project after that point in an active capacity, that's where things started to have a bit more deviation, and personal preference becomes much more important. Final Fantasy XII came from the creative mind of Yasumi Matsuno, who did a fantastic job with the story of Final Fantasy Tactics. But as development progressed on 12, Matsuno left production. Yep. 
It then fell to Daisuke Watanabe and Mua Shoda to try and interpret Matsunu's vision as best as they could. Kitaze then served as the executive producer on Final Fantasy XIII. Yeah, I heard the 12 was trash, was instead man. instead created by Kazushige Nojima. Motomo Toriyama then combined Nojima's concept with his own narrative vision before Watanabe penned the final script. But due to the expansive lore, much yep. of which is housed within the in-game data log, it can be hard to digest. Final Fantasy XV was then an unfortunate mishmash. Starting out as Final Fantasy vs. XIII, it had input from Nojima and Tetsuya Nomura before then being reimagined by Hajime Tabata, Sayori Itomuro, Akiko Ishibashi, and Takumi Nishida. To gain a full appreciation of the wider story, players also needed to make sure they took in all of the supporting material via the various downloadable content episodes, the oh anime no. series called Brotherhood, oh and the no. movie called Kingsclave. And again, this made it all very hard to digest. That's Final Fantasy VII Remake, the most recent iteration, has gone back to earlier roots with many of the creative minds from the original working on the story. It has created some division amongst the fan base due to its DV. Anytime you piecemeal or uh, deviate information amongst several forms of content, um, kind of like they did with Final Fantasy XV, like he just said, like you dilute what the, what the story was supposed to be. If you get a firmer, more complete context from DLC, like I feel like that DLC has like retroactively made the main story worse. Same with looking at like other stuff, like uh, like watching a background anime, uh, watching uh, reading a book, like you do in Warcraft. Like those are just I don't I don't think stories should be incomplete like that. Where you get more background and stuff from other things, other other er other areas. I think you should get DLC should be continuations, books should be continuations, animes should be continuations, not not side stories or things that are related to or support the main narrative. That's my opinion. Deviation from the source material. But it's not a bad entry point for newcomers, and its solid foundation and execution serve as one of the better narratives in the past 10 to 15 years of the franchise. But that then brings us on to tolerance. The earliest games in the franchise featured some grating game design choices, some of which haven't aged all that well. Square Enix has attempted to address some of these with subsequent re-releases and remasters, such as the Final Fantasy 1 and 2 20th Anniversary Editions, but back when those games initially released, the franchise was very much finding its feet. By the SNES era, everything was much more defined, and the graphical style implemented during that time has aged pretty well, assuming you don't opt to play the newer mobile versions. The PlayStation era, often defined as the Golden Era, then depends on choice and tolerance of graphics. Final Fantasy VII was lauded for its graphical prowess back in the day, but by today's standards, it doesn't hold up all that bad. well. Likewise, until its remaster release, Final Fantasy VIII was often used for ironic memes. They went for a more realistic art style, but even though it was good back then, the graphical implementation has not stood the test of time. Yeah, no, not Each at of all. these games were also turn-based and featured numerous annoyances like random encounters, but many of the modern PC adaptations have put enhancements in place to negate their impact. You That's can also apply better. your own mods to create a much more tailored yeah, experience. That looks if a lot you better. Wish. Final Fantasy X was where the 3D games became a bit smoother, and thanks to the remaster, I heard t I heard it's still was a good. decent looking game, and it's probably the happy medium when it comes to tolerance for presentation within that era of Final Fantasy. Final Fantasy XIV, XV, and the VII Remake are clear winners here though, due to how modern they are. Each right. of them features gorgeous graphics, and they don't feature the same quality of life issues as some of the older games. The only issue from a tolerance perspective is that they aren't all that representative of the bulk of the main numbered series anymore, so they could create misaligned expectations. But if they can be used as a gateway to explore the rest of the franchise, then there are worse places to start if tolerance isn't an issue. So that's the three pillars in isolation, yeah. but what about a more blended view? That's where you can find a lot of variance in terms of opinion, but to Lauren and I, there is- People keep saying do not play 9 until you played 4 through 8. Or four through seven, don't play nine until you've played the earlier installments. I guess maybe like four, uh, three to three through three through six, because then you'll understand the references better for nine. Always one clear winner whenever we get asked this question, and that's Final Fantasy X. 
Really? It's available thanks to the Final Fantasy X Ten Two HD remaster on the PlayStation 3, PlayStation Vita, PlayStation 4, Between PC, Nintendo Switch, and, and Xbox One. And despite on. being almost 20 years old now, it has aged pretty well thanks to its graphical style and gameplay, which was a fleshed out conditional turn-based battle system. Final Fantasy X also features an interesting cast of characters, each with their own motivations and connections, as well as a unique world rife with challenges. Those challenges are very real, in terms Go of the carnage four. caused by Sin, but there are also many problems brewing under the surface, and the story of Final Fantasy X has so many layers. You can play the game numerous times and learn new things with every subsequent playthrough, and thanks to the simple but effective gameplay, it never feels like a chore, and that's a special quality for a game to have. Thanks to the sphere grid, even though each character does have an initial set path, once that is escaped, you can customize your character's abilities and attributes, and you can also create weapons and armor mm -hmm. that have desired traits. Even side quests have customization, as within the Blitzball minigame, you can form your own team and develop your players. It also has some of the most comprehensive side content in general, from the sometimes infuriating Celestial Weapons minigames through to the Dark Aeons and Penance. There is plenty to keep players occupied. Another good option though is Final Titan, Fantasy XIV. <laughs> this is playable on the PlayStation 4, PC and Mac, and it will receive some enhancements for those who want to play on the PlayStation 5. But whether or not it's a good starting point depends on your perspective. On the one hand, it does feature a comprehensive job system, and thanks to the character creation Image. and gear and ability setups, there's plenty of customization. As of Shadowbringers, it also features one of the best storylines in recent times. I'll be real, I do not consider playing an MMO, playing a Final Fantasy game. It is a Final Fantasy game. It is. But it's not the same thing. Like, it's not it's not equatable, in my opinion. But Final Fantasy XIV is quite a different experience from the regular franchise. Great storytelling, though. Due to its genre, and it requires a lot of investment in the form of both time and money to maximize the experience. It also comes steeped with a boatload of nostalgic content, and if you start with some of the earlier offline iterations first, then venture forth with Final Fantasy XIV, it will change the experience. Then again, if you do start with Final Fantasy XIV, you may just want to learn more about many of the elements that you encounter along your way. But with that, that's hopefully a comprehensive answer to the question. Be sure to let us know in the comments the game that you think is best for newcomers to the franchise. And of course, if you enjoyed watching, then please do hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. As a reminder, if you'd like to vote on future topics for us to cover on the channel, then you can do so by supporting us on Patreon. Not only does this help us to grow and create better content, but it also gives you some influence on our creative direction. Alright guys, this is Daryl signing out. A big thank you to all of our Patreon and YouTube membership supporters, and of course, a big thanks to all of you for watching this video. Yeah, I hope I think, to see you all again soon for more Final Fantasy goodness. I think 4 or 10 for sure, what we're starting with, guys. I think 4 or 10. Uh, the video is, which Final Fantasy game should you play first? And it is by the Final Fantasy Union. Uh, give them some love if you can. Follow them. I'm going to subscribe right now, actually. Put them on all notifications for later. Um, but yeah, so... That was our reactions for the day, and we'll come back and we'll play some Final Fantasy XIV, guys. Honestly, though, um, I think we're going to start with Final Fantasy IV or X. I'm not sure yet. I'll decide um, later on, but we're not anywhere near close to being uh, starting on a new Final Fantasy or RPG game. Um, I also want to look at an Octopath Traveler tomorrow. We'll watch our video and react to that. Um, an Octopath, Octopath Traveler, should you play, and uh, kind of see what that game's all about. But I heard good things about it, so I'm excited to play that too. Uh, we'll be right back, guys.